Since everything is made of atoms, any attempt to explain basic electricity has to start with them, because that's where the electrical forces and fields originate. So hang on as we discuss protons, neutrons, electrons, their properties, and how all that relates to electricity. Atoms are small, incredibly small. Imagine standing on a beach, sand in every direction and deep beneath your feet. Grab a handful and let it run between your fingers until just a few grains remain clinging to your skin. Look at one of those grains. That one grain of sand has as many atoms in it as there are grains of sand in the beach you're standing on. Atoms are small. Here's a drawing of an atom. The particles with the minus signs are called electrons. The center of an atom, the nucleus, contains protons and neutrons. The protons are identified by the plus signs, and the neutrons have an N for no charge. These signs are assigned to each of the particles because of the way they behave to each other and to the surrounding world. This drawing is a bit misleading because, in reality, the particles are much smaller in relation to the size of the atom than they appear here. Atoms are mostly empty space, their size defined by the pattern of electron orbits. Follow this bit of logic. Everything is made of atoms. Atoms are more than 99% empty space. Therefore, everything is more than... The A end of the statement is correct. Solid matter is more than 99% empty space. It's electrical force that binds atoms together and creates solid matter. Think about water. In its liquid form, you can put your hand through it. But if you remove enough energy from the water molecules, cool them off so they slow down, the electrical forces link those molecules up and make a solid, ice. Solid matter is just mostly empty atoms bound together by electrical force. The sign of the atomic particles refers to a property they have called electric charge. We don't know exactly where it comes from or why these particles have it. They just do. It's fundamental. We do, however, understand the behavior of these particles and the interaction of these properties quite well. They're predictable and reliable. Any object that is electrically charged exerts a force on other charges, an attractive force if the charges are different, and a force of repulsion if the charges are the same, as illustrated here. This means that, because everything is made of atoms, and atoms are electrically charged, electrical forces are at work all the time, in everything we see, touch, and interact with. We don't always see the effects of electrical force, because atoms tend to be electrically balanced, equal numbers of electrons and protons, so the overall charge is zero. The strength of the electrical force is not constant. It varies in direct proportion to the square of the number of charges and inversely proportional to the square of the distance between the charges. Say what? All that means is that the more charge you have in one spot, the stronger the force is, and the greater the distance between charges, the weaker the force is, by a considerable amount, as the drawing shows. This kind of relationship is important to understand because our first inclination is to think about this sort of thing in straight proportional terms. Twice as big, twice as heavy. Twice as fast, twice the energy. But neither of these is true. A cube of iron two inches on a side is not twice as heavy as a cube one inch on a side. It's eight times as heavy. A car going 60 miles an hour doesn't have twice the energy of one going 30. It has four times the energy. And electrical force increases and decreases at the square of the distance involved. This means that if you are 9 feet away from an energized electrical line and move closer, say to 3 feet away, the electrical field is 9 times stronger. The strength of the field and its danger to you increases rapidly as you approach and decreases rapidly as you move away. Okay, let's review. Pick all of the true statements. Let's see how you did. 
Atoms are made of three primary particles, electrons, protons, and neutrons. That's true. Electrons have a minus sign, protons a plus sign, neutrons no sign. That's true too. Charges with the same sign attract one another. No, that's false. It's just the opposite, right? If the distance between charges doubles, the force is cut in half. No, no, that one's false too. Remember, when the distance between charges doubles, the force is cut to one quarter, inverse square of the distance. Double the distance. Two times two is four. Inverse, one-fourth. So, back to our atom model. Thanks to Ben Franklin, the two flavors of electrical charge have names. He called the kind of charge that electrons have negative, and the kind of charge that protons have positive. He didn't know from electrons and protons, of course. He was just describing the behavior of the as yet little known property of electrical charge. Unfortunately for generations of students and electrical workers, he got it backwards. So we've ended up with charge flowing from negative to positive. Yeah, well, it's the fact that it flows that's important, not so much the direction. Turns out, when electrical charges do move, a couple of interesting things happen. First, if you move a lot of charge through a length of material, the material will heat up, basically from the friction of a lot of charges moving through a restricted space. I'm sure you can think of many applications where this is useful. Also, anytime an electrical charge is in motion, another force appears which also has attractive and repulsive properties, its strength varies with separation distance, and it can be made to do work. We call that force magnetism. Yep, the same magnetism that we see in a common bar magnet, north and south poles, the magnetic field, like poles repel, unlike attract, all that, occurs around a moving charge. That's because the source of all magnetism is moving electrical charge. We normally don't see it because atoms, which contain a lot of moving electrical charges, right, are arranged randomly, so the forces cancel each other out, but get them all moving in the same direction and the magnetic force appears, and that's what happens when charge moves through a conductor. So by making charge move, we can heat things and create a force that can move objects. So anytime that an electrical charge is flowing, a magnetic field surrounds it. The strength of the field depends on the number of charges flowing and the separation distance, that square of the distance thing again. So, what have we learned? Well, everything is made of atoms. They are incredibly small and mostly empty space. Atoms are made of particles that have an electric charge, and it is electric forces that hold solid matter together. Like charges repel one another, and unlike charges attract. Moving charge heats a conductor up and creates a magnetic field. The magnetic force has properties similar to the electric force. Unlikes attract, likes repel, strength varies with distance. Well, that's the beginning. Atomic structure and electrical force. Not too bad, right? Thanks for watching.